It's Fernando Ruiz Art. There we go. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And today we are going to talk about a, a very common problem, which is proportions. Now, when we're talking about proportions, what we're really talking about are size relationships. So, um, and that can mean, say, the size of one figure to another figure, one figure to um, uh, background uh, objects like a car or uh, a house. Um, but we can also be talking about size relationships within the figure uh, himself. So, for example, uh, making sure that the head is the right size for the body, making sure that the body isn't too long or too wide or that the legs aren't too short or too long. So, in order to do this properly, we have... Um, uh, most artists have developed what we call a proportion scale, which is a way of measuring a figure and uh, parts of a figure. Uh, now, proportion scales, if you look these up and, and you consult different art books, take different courses, you'll probably see some differences, um, some differences pretty major, some less so, but you'll probably see some differences from one, uh, from one scale to another. And... Um, it, it just happens that proportions are one of those things like a lot of a lot of topics in art that um, uh, there, there's just not one way of doing it. There's there's many ways. So I always I always recommend all, to all my students uh, try all the different ways that you learn and see what what um, what works best for you and what gives you the best results. Uh, most of us, what we end up doing is, is picking and choosing from different systems and making our own. So uh, I've got a figure here that I very roughly roughed out. So what I want to do is show you um, how, uh, how I would measure him out to keep him in proportion. Now, in just about every proportion scale, the unit of measurement that we use is a the size of the figure's head so we we call our proportion scales a head count so um the the head count that i like to go by for my figures is that my figures are one two three four two three four five six seven eight i like my figures to be about eight heads tall and I'm not breaking out a, a ruler and measuring these heads. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, and that's fine. Uh, that that just keeps me in the in the realm of possibility, um, in the realm of, of accuracy, somewhat in the realm. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight heads, from the top of the true head to the bottom of his ankles. We have eight heads. Now, within these eight heads, we have certain um, landmarks that we can um, check, that we can gauge. So, one, two, three, four. Four heads takes me from the top of his true head right down to the bottom of his pelvis. So, the main torso of the body should be about four heads long. Between heads five, six, six, and seven this is where the knees should come to rest. So right between head six and seven, this would be what I call the knee line. And then at head eight, the ankles come to come to rest. The heels, I should say, come the heels of the foot should uh, rest on that line. So those are the major landmarks as far as the length and height of the, the figure. Now, in terms of the arms, and here you'll, you'll see a good amount of uh, difference from, from one scale to another, I like to go about a head and a half to the elbow. 1.5 heads to the elbow. And then another head and a half to the wrist. Okay, 
And then the hand, the hand, a figure that's standing at attention like this guy is here, the hand should come about mid-thigh. So right down between head five and six is where the hand should come to, to rest. Now the hand, the hand should be equal to the size of the face. So if you hold your hand up to your face, it should come from your forehead down to your chin. So that's a good way of making sure you're not giving your figures hands uh, that are too, uh, too large. So this is 0.5 and one head. So really from shoulder to wrist, your arms are about three heads uh, long. And then you have the hand. The legs, you have two heads for, um, I'm, I'm sorry, the legs, you have two heads for the upper thigh. And then you have two more heads down to the heels. So the, he the legs in total are about four heads. Now we need to talk about the width of the figure. And for the width of your standard figure, I like to go three heads across. One, your actual head, and, th and three. So you should be able to fit on either side of the figure one head, and that should take us from shoulder to shoulder. Now, in the cases where I'm drawing a figure that's a little brawnier, say a, a Superman type or a real muscular figure, I might actually go a head and a half on each on, on each shoulder. So just to give him that extra that extra width, that extra uh, brawn, um, I may I may expand things uh, that much, but otherwise. This is uh, this is about the the uh, the way I go about figuring most of my proportions. Now, of course, if you're if you're looking at a figure, or you're watching this, you're saying, okay, um, most of my figures aren't standing perfectly straight at attention. Well, it's not a, a totally mathematical accurate system, and there, and and I kind of like that about it because when I'm drawing, especially figures, any or any organic shape, um, I want a certain amount of flexibility. So if I'm drawing, say, a another type of pose, where maybe my figure is maybe foreshortened, maybe I'm looking down at him. I could still use the system, but I have to maybe tailor how my my heads are are laying. Maybe there's some overlap in the case of a foreshortened figure, and I may I may want to talk about that in another video. Maybe I said I mentioned before that legs are about four heads. Maybe there are two heads, and then two more this way. So the, the, the system is flexible and can stand up to some customization as, as needed. Um, and this isn't to say that every time you're drawing a figure, you need to, to draw this stack of heads next to that figure. Eventually, proportions are going to become something that, that are second nature to you that you'll ha that you'll develop an eye for an instinct for so you'll have an easier time with them but um that doesn't mean that the time won't come when you draw a figure and the figure isn't looking right and you've got and you've you're questioning your own proportions so in that case you may want to count heads on that figure and see uh see if you're somewhere in the realm of the human species so that's uh, that's my lesson on proportions, folks. This is uh, this is my proportion scale. Um, feel free to uh, go out there and give it a shot, uh, and also, you know, like I said before, look up other scales, um, look up uh, how other artists do this, and see um, see see what their system is like. I know some systems will call for an, a seven and a half head figure or an eight and a half head figure. And that always just felt off to me for, for different reasons. So this has always been the, uh, the system I've gone with. So um, I hope you'll give it a shot. And uh, if you have any questions at all, please uh, put them in the comments section below. 
Uh, I want to thank you guys for tuning in and uh, watching this video. Uh, if you liked it, I hope you'll click like. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll subscribe because uh, I've got a lot of other videos up and I hope you'll watch those. Um, and I've also got more, more videos to come. Uh, as always, if you guys have any ideas for topics, uh, please put them in the comments below. Uh, I, and if you ha have any questions in the comments below as well, I always um, read them myself and I do respond to them myself. All right, that's it for me. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. And as always, keep drawing, everybody. Keep drawing.